ON16 P42 Question 2. This is an ideal guess question. Well, ideal guess and kind of a bit of kinetic theory. But let's look at this. Equation is given to you. PV equals NRT. This is a must-know equation for ideal guess. But they want you to state what is meant by the symbol. What is N and what is T. So you gotta... Well, this one you just have to know and explain what is N. N here refers to the number of moles of your gas. I mean, this is a gas, then you talk about number, numbers. Sorry about that. Number of moles. Okay. Or in other words, you can call it the amount of substance. But I would prefer if you can be able to explain the word moles, so amount of substance. How much, how many particles are there inside this amount? Okay, so this number of moles, amount of substance. Okay, that will be one mark. And you have to also talk about what is symbol T. I forgot to say this is B1. Uh, symbol T, what is T? Temperature. But in what? Celsius or Kelvin or Fahrenheit, there's so many different scales. So it's best to say this is the temperature in Kelvins. In other words, the Kelvin temperature scale is also called the thermodynamic temperature or absolute temperature. So you can say the thermodynamic or I guess you say absolute temperature. Any of these would and you give you a mark. So temperature. So that is another B1 mark behind my head. There we go. Okay, this one first one. Just make sure you know what the variables stand for. And things like that. Okay, then we come to the part. Oh, this part C is very tricky. Okay, let's go to B first. Ideal gas is in the container, certain volume, pressure. Oh, let's let's label all this out. So we have V, we have P, and we have temperature inside the gas. P V T. So the number of molecules is this. Well, they just gave us the equation, right? So let's use that. P V equals to NRT. Now, a side note, there's another variation of this formula. Maybe you see before in chemistry, but you can also say PV equals to big N KT. Uh, we, I guess you could use both formulas to get to the answer, but let's let's do the, the NRT way first. And we'll see if we want to use the other one. So pressure, 4.9 times 10 to the 5. We plug in the values. Volume, at this volume, time 10 to the 3. Oh, centimeter. Please be very careful. We need to convert this centimeter to meter. So this will be 10 to the negative 6. If you're wondering why, because centi is times 10 negative 2, right? But it's cube. So 3 times 2, negative 6. Okay, so just remember that. And uh, number of moles, I guess that's related to number of molecules. Related to, but not the exact thing. Number of molecules is actually big N. But we have small n. Anyway, let's just find the moles first. R is a constant. You can find the first page of every passive paper, 8.31. And the temperature in Kelvin. Oh, must convert. This is 100. So 100 Celsius. Convert to Kelvin. That will be uh, 100 plus 273. Sorry. 273. Okay. Now we can get our n. Press calculator. You would get about 0 0.3794 moles. Oh, that's very small. It's about correct. And this is the amount of substance. But they want the number of molecules. Big N. So what you could do now is, you need to know what is the definition of a mole. Now, here's, a, here's something for you to know if you didn't know it. In one mole of substance, there are... Avogadro number of molecules. What is Avogadro number? So in one more of substance, there are 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 number of molecules. In one mole. One more anything, one more of carbon, one more of uh, oxygen. Okay, just there's just this many inside there. So we have 0 0.394 moles. So therefore, you can say that the number of molecules will be 0 0.379, I guess. You know what? Let me just round off to 0 0.380. Okay. Times this Avogadro's number, which is also given in the formula sheet in the beginning. So this will be 6.02 times 10, 23. Ah, now we can do and see how much we get for this. So I got about 2.28. 2.28. 
seven six i guess times ten to the twenty three did I get the answer that they want me to prove? Yes, I did. 2.3. Mmm, very nice. So if you know how to use this other method, uh, it's pretty much plugging in the same thing except for KB. You are going to use a different constant called the Boltzmann constant. And you can calculate N straight away. You can find this value for the Boltzmann constant in, I think, the first page, the data formula sheet as well. So if you want to try that out, go try it out. Anyway, three marks here. If you plug in all the values correctly, this line, that's one mark. If you got your moles, that's a C1 mark. And of course, if you manage to prove your answer, that's the last one. If you did the Boltzmann constant method, the green color one, uh, this C and A mark will be kind of combined because you kind of already got the N, all right? Uh, so physics, usually we use this. Chemistry, sometimes uh, chemistry will use this one a little bit more. Okay, let's go to part C. This is where things get weird. Use the data from B. What was the data from B? Number of molecules in the container. All right. 2.28. Okay. To calculate the mean distance between molecules in the gas. What? Okay, okay. Let's 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 slow down a bit and think. You have a container, right? That's what they say in the beginning. Where's the container? Where's my container? Ah, container with a certain volume, 2.4. That means if I have a container, let me draw the container. If I have a container, let's say a square-ish container. Or even better, a cube. I don't know, whatever shape, I don't care whatever shape it is. In that container, I have a total volume of gas, which is... What's this? 2.4 times 10 to the 3 cm cube. Mm, okay, so this is 2.4 times 10 to the 3 cm cube. Now, inside this container are many, 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 many gas molecules. What's the average distance between all of them? Wow, how do you how do you do this average thing? So we're gonna do this. I'm gonna ask the question, how much does each molecule take up in this box? What is the volume of each molecule? Maybe a molecule of gas is like this. Or we could just say ah it's a round thing. Lah. How much volume does this thing take up? So I'm going to do the total volume of gas. And I want to find how much does one molecule take up. So I'm going to divide that by the number of molecules, which we just calculated just now. Okay, so this will give me, let's write it out, 2.4 times 10 to the 3. This is in cm cube, okay. And how many molecules are there? We just did this super long calculation. So I'm going to, I'm going to use 2.3. So that would be 2.3 times 10 to the 23. Wow, that's a lot. So this will be about, calculator time, 1.04 times 10 negative 20 cm cube. Now this number here is the volume of, uh, average volume of each molecule in this container. Right? So now we need to find what's the mean distance between molecules. We know on average each of them should have this, but how do you find distance? Now there are a few ways to think of this. Let's let's imagine we zoom into this this whole container and we see lots of molecules side by side. If I assume that you know each of them occupy kind of a, a cube worth of space, okay, they occupy a space doesn't mean that they fill the entire thing. But this is the volume assigned to each of them, and there's like many 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 more. I'm not gonna draw all of them, but imagine there's many many more lah, okay and each of these volume is this value so if my my first assumption is if i want to assume that they are cube cubic volumes i want to find the distance between let's say this is in the middle and there's another molecule here in the middle what is this distance hmm this distance is also the same as this distance, which is, I guess I can call it x. So volume of a cube, this one, v equals to x cube. Ah, ah. So I can say, okay, for each cube, x cube equals to volume of each molecule. If I assume a molecule is in the shape of a cube, this will be 1.04 times 10, negative 20 cm unit. So that means x here will be 
0.18 times 10, negative 7. Whoa! So that means the side of one of this cube x is 2.18, which also means that this mysterious distance, this is the mean distance on average, is also going to be this as well, between two molecules, if I take the centers. Wow, we can do like that, meh? Can. So this one will be 2.2 times 10, negative 7. Wow. One mark comes from you if you find the volume of one molecule, which is up there. Then if you try to find like the mean spacing in whatever method, I don't... This is one of the methods. That's C1. And if you can actually get the answer, that's A1. So you, you might be feeling feel very funny, like, miss, molecules are not in the shape of cubes. Or shouldn't they be in the shape of spheres? Well, sure. If you want to think of spheres... An alternate method is, if you zoom into this container, maybe instead of cubes, you think of molecules as like spheres. One, two, three. Each of these sphere has some kind of radius, right? And now you want to find the spacing between two adjacent molecules. So they'll be from here. Okay, so they have a center here, another center here. And you find what is this? mean distance. Well, you would do the same thing, except that now, number two, you are thinking of a spherical volume instead of a cubic volume. So you think of spherical volumes. What's the volume of a sphere? Can you remember? Uh, v equals to 4 over 3 pi r cubed. If we can find r, we can find this mysterious distance. So this will be um, 4 over 3 pi r cube equals to one sphere's volume. Let's highlight. No, let's let's color it. You know the volume of one sphere. You can probably find the radius. Okay. So this will be 1.04 times 10, negative 20. Ah, let's find the radius. So you press calculator, you should get a radius of about one point. Wait, okay, get a radius of about 1.35. 4, sure, times 10 to the negative 7. Pretty small. CM. Uh, but don't forget, we want to find the mysterious distance here, right? Mean distance. So how many radius is there between them? There's one radius here. There's another radius here. So your mean distance would then be... Mean distance would be 2 times the radius. That would be... If you use this method to estimate, about 2.7 times 10, negative 7, cm. Okay, so that is how you can think of this question. Two ways. Uh, if you look at the math scheme, they kind of suggest the first method for using cubic volume. So you make an assumption. No, these are assumptions. You find the average. Yeah, the particles are all bouncing around. They occupy a certain volume. You assume them to be in cubes or assume them to be spheres inside this container, occupying a certain space. And other particles cannot really come close because... They repel each other, I guess. All right, so that's all for this question. Hope that was helpful in helping you think about what is happening inside a gas container. How do the molecules occupy space in a container? But that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one.